Good afternoon traders and welcome to this live Axia stream where we're going to be looking at the execution of our elite Axia trader over the June ECB which occurred last week. So this kind of follows on from last week's stream so I urge any of you watching to go back and watch that in advance of this just because it talks a lot about um, the fundamental changes in play, um, the, the technical structure and really covers a little bit more of the finer detail. What I want to do more in today's stream is really kind of focus on how this trader executes and spend a lot more time in the ladders um, and look at you know, what a lot of us, you know, we really enjoy looking, um, looking at. And, and also today's a bit of a lesson in um, you know, grit. How much grit do you have as a trader? You know, how, how much can you be hit down and still keep your kind of head on your shoulders and manage to bounce back and take advantage of subsequent moves that carry on. So very quickly, before we get to the ladders, um, I just want to look at mainly at the Bund today. I mean, he executes in the Bund and the Bobble, but we're really going to be focusing in the Bund. And just broadly at um, the first section of footage that we're going to see, um, which occurs in this sort of area, is on the 12.45 screen dump. So if you recall, I'll look back to last week's um, debrief. The, the, the screen dump essentially had a dovish tilt to it. So the initial expected reaction would be for Bunds to be lifted and Euro to sell off. Um, and you know, with a lot of dovish expectation built into this meeting, that didn't happen. So what we're gonna see is how um, this trader reacted when you know, he gets very aggressive buying the bonds and as they start to roll over, how he can manage his risk in that area. And that's quite important to kind of you know, demonstrate how you know, he kept himself in the game for the remainder of the move. We're then going to look forward um, to the moves that occur. So this is the Bunds again, this is on a higher time frame, a five minute chart that occurred throughout the presser. So we're gonna see first the 12.45 reaction, then throughout the presser, how he kind of negotiates this area, um, and then really where the bulk of his money is made on this sell-off in the Bund, which takes out these daily targets um, here. And then from that going on, we're then going to look at, again, if you recall, um, how we discussed um, Draghi's tone and what he spoke about throughout the presser. When that then flipped to very dovish, there was a key statement um, which you know reiterated or focused on potential cuts or reinstatement of um, APP. We're going to look out. He trades the bid in this section, and then after the press com conference is finished, the bid in this section. So really, quite a few component components to this, which is why I want to spend a lot more time in the ladders. Um, but you know, feel free to bounce back to um, this chart just so you can kind of keep an eye on where we are um, as we go through. I'll try to keep everyone up to speed as we get to it. But really, getting straight into the ladders now. Um, And this is queued up for the 12.45. So the main market we're looking at here is the Bund and to some extent the Bobble. Now in my prior stream, I spoke a lot about the correlations between the Bund and the Euro and how I kind of leverage on those. Um, you know, I'm not gonna take too much note of that in this just because there's a lot going on, a lot of kind of, um, a lot going on on this specific ladder. But should you wish to look at what the Euro is doing, that can be seen in this box here. So other than that, just want to take note of, you know, where his PL was um, at the start of this. It kind of come, plays into, you know, the context, the theme of this stream being, you know, how you can kind of go down and then come back and still have a good result. So he's 36K up on the day. Um, so going into it with, you know, a healthy, um, bit of kind of uh, money to play with, but not a silly amount for this trader. You know, he's, we've seen many of his streams that, you know, he really generates, you know, in excess of sort of one, 200K days. So, you know, it, he's very strong when he's in this position where he has, you know, a little bit of wiggle room, a little bit of kind of flex in his PL, really allows him to get quite aggressive. 
But what the real skill and the real skill and the real takeaway in this is as that's very quickly depleted on the 1245 move, you know, as I keep reiterating and will do throughout the stream, you know, how he manages his risk and gets himself back in the game um, with some of the subsequent moves. Because, you know, thinking of your mindset as this evolves, you know, everyone's generally took a bit of a hit on the first move. And it's really quite difficult to kind of stay in the moment and contemplate each, you know, move or change or comment that you hear, you know, in isolation, you know, not necessarily taking into account, you know, where you're standing on the day or where you were sort of five, 10 minutes ago. So I'm gonna start by playing this just at normal speed, but I will jump through and speed it up later on. So it's currently at one speed, we're coming at the 12.45. Um, we're just gonna wait for the screen dump to drop so you can see he's very quickly into, you know, I think 100 lots up to 162.40. Drags his average price up to 42s. Scales out of a bit and then you recall from the prior stream, you know, we're talking about this rotation between 45s and 54s. Now, he's worked himself out of kind of half of his size as it's felt it's not working, but also note, he's also in 240 lots in the bobble. So as this starts going against him, you know, he's cut his button position down from, I think, 240 lots to about 80 lots, hoping now for a bit of a bounce. But as it becomes evident that that's not going to happen, he cuts and reverses position in the bund. Now, you know, he, will, he would say this himself that, you know, sometimes it does happen where as soon as you cut and reverse your position, it bounces, you know, and sometimes you just have to kind of wear that. He's recognised that the long hasn't worked. Um, you know, the market clearly wants to offer on this information and, you know, he's taken the hit. There's nothing more he can do about that. The chances now of this going and bouncing and taking the highs after I think we started at 38, so we've come straight back through the opening price and offered through it as the euro is pushing higher, as we can see here, still like making new highs. You know, really he just wants to make sure that if the bun now rolls over and starts to break down through the low of the day, coming in at 14s and taking those daily levels, which I think occur in the kind of 70s or 80s range, you know, that he's got enough size on. And this is real key to the way he executes this next phase of the move. You know, he's constantly trying to kind of build that large short position as he's seen the rejection um, at the highs for the dovish play. Always trying to build that position to look for that extended flush, you know, that kind of 10 to 20 tick move where he can really make quite a bit. So he's already down you know, at his worst, I think he was down sort of 20K or so um, from being 35K or so up. So it's a pretty big swing, but he's, he's down sort of 40K um, in the buns so far on this move. Sorry, in the buns and bobble so far on this move. But what you're seeing now is him just kind of staying with it. You can see he's taking a bit of a hit, going offside, trying to scale out, trying to be dynamic with his size, but also understanding that you know, these 12s, this low of the day, it should go. And when it does go, he doesn't want to be left hanging with very little size on there. But this was kind of part of the frustration of this move as we were getting, approaching the low of the day and having these, you know, deep washbacks, 10, 15 ticks or so, which when you're positioned pretty heavy towards the lows, you know, that's a pretty big squeeze to, to, um, to weather. He's also entered... Um, a long position into the B in the BTPs, as you can see on this far right-hand ladder. Um, but really going to focus mainly on the buns and what he does here. So you can see he's kind of fluctuating his size between, you know, 200 lots down to 80 lots as he starts to go offside. Um, and really after taking quite a big hit, you know, in the first proportion of this move, you know, he doesn't really want to then double down and make, take that again. So he's gone from a position of being very aggressive, being up on the day and kind of leveraging up on the initial 12.45 move to now he is a little bit on the back foot. And I think this is really interesting how, you know, a trader of this size kind of manages this situation because it's not just the markets you're trading, you know, or you're, you're having to execute within. It's also your own mindset relative to, you know, what your 
kind of P&Ls done in a day. It's all, it's all very well. We'd all like to be robots and just operate, you know, without any kind of emotion whatsoever. But at this point, you've got to be feeling pretty frustrated. So after the initial flurry of the 12.45, we're kind of seeing everything start to stabilise again. We've failed to make a new low through the 12s. You know, he hasn't got a particularly good average price. And as this all starts to wind down now, you know, we'll see that this starts to grind higher. And I just want to show this to you at four times the speed so that we can kind of fit in the whole story. So I'm going to kind of skip through this bit a little bit as we see the first sort of pullback. But you see as he's going offside and the market's drifting higher, you know, he's not panicking, he's staying short, but he's very nimble now. 38 lots in the buns, 22 lots in the bobble. You know, that's very small size for him and really manageable. And what you see him do a lot in this situation is, yes, he's scaling out as the market's rotating lower, but if he sees some clear absorption followed by, you know, some clear kind of, you know, aggressive selling into this pullback, you know, he's never scared of getting some more size on and taking the opportunity and then working the next rotation down. He hasn't really seen this as it's kind of quietening down. We've still got the presser to come, which starts at 1.30, so there's another 40 minutes to that. But as we take the low there, you know, he's getting back up to 150 lots um, and trying to get some more size on for that extended move down towards this sort of area and below for the daily levels. But again, as we'll see, the pullbacks are quite kind of steep, quite severe, and he's not really in his comfortable position, which is generally where you know, his average price can weather the rotations um, of you know, the market as it's moving in his favour. He's starting to get in that position now, but as you know, it's extending, showing more momentum down through the, the lower of the day and pushing, extending the range lower, you know, he's getting more size on, but not necessarily to the extent that he had on before. So we've taken the low of the day. We've now gone from 12s to 97s. Yes, he has capitalised on that, but you know he's still down 5k on the day. He's still down 40k or so on the move. So for the sort of size that he deploys for his high conviction trades, you know you say there's still a lot more room to kind of get himself back in the game. Um, but He's kind of steadied the ship a little bit at this point, and that this is kind of a, a part of the um, the kind of the the afternoon which you really want you to take notice of. You know, there's no point in this situation just kind of keep trying to dig and dig and dig and dig yourself out of the hole when you know right now it's made that low, it, that new low. It's kind of had a 15 tick flush down through. You know, unless you see on no new information or new news this rolling over and kind of moving all the way down, you know, maybe not the time to get massively heavy. Pick your kind of points of execution and get really aggressive when you see what you want to see. But, you know, I was quite surprised looking at this. Well, not surprised, but it was quite interesting just to see that, you know, he really just sort of stayed out of the action, kind of settled himself and then kind of just started to build his focus again about what he wanted to do and what he wanted to see throughout the presser. And, um, and you know, we'll see as this moves on how that really kind of, you know, it really pays off throughout the course of the afternoon. So you see, as I mentioned, these pullbacks, when he sees the offer hold and start to step in, just noticed it around this area, which was the kind of break level or the prior low of the day that we saw before. So he's looking at these kind of relatively obvious technical areas for the price action that he wants to see. And then if he does observe that, he's willing to get in. But then if it bounces hard again, you know, he's not scared of scaling out re relatively aggressively, you know, laying 10 to 20 lots on the bid to get out of a large proportion of his size. So you can see there so far this kind of 12s level, which was the prior low, has kind of held um, and he's just working short around that, looking for potentially, you know, without any kind of distinct dovishness from Draghi throughout the, um, throughout the presser. You know, the idea that there's been a lot of dovish expectation priced into this meeting 
it fails to deliver. Bonds are so high at the moment, yields are in negative territory. You know, there's so much room for this to roll over. You know, if the story that's kind of been told so far with the failure at the highs, rolling over, making new lows, if that really starts to play into like an extended trend um, throughout the afternoon, then you know he's just really trying to keep himself in the game to be able to do that. So again, this looks quite fast, but this is at four times the speed. So you know you've got to think that he has been sitting on this now for you know half an hour or so, 25 minutes. He's been involved. You know the press is due to start in 20 minutes or so. And in fact, right now, I'm just going to fast forward now to the presser. So I'm just going to give a quick recap, you know, very quickly from this chart. So, so far, we've been... So, so far, we've bid up failed here, come back down, um, made a new low from here, and now we've just kind of ground back up and we've seen him kind of start to sell in this area. Um, but really we're catching up, I think it's pretty much here. So we failed to extend higher, rolled over, pulled back, and now the press is starting and we're kind of waiting to see what, or to hear, what Draghi's tone is going to be like um, throughout that. Sorry, one second. So I'm going to play this at four times, um, but I will slow it down as we approach some of the key kind of areas. So. Now, Bunds trading, 2021s. You know, Euro's still towards the high, just touching base with that at the moment. Um, but we'll see as Draghi comes out, and you know, his his rhetoric's relatively hawkish to start with. You know, the Bund really starts to roll over. But what's important is how he kind of manages his size and really stays with it until that final 15, 20 ticks flush, where he pretty much recoups. The majority of his day so you know the meetings just started he's not getting involved hasn't necessarily heard anything as of yet you know the market's just kind of you know fluttering around that kind of 18s to 22s area and now we're seeing the euro making just about to make new highs. So there's sellers just kind of sitting at the high in the euro at the moment and as soon as they give way he enters short in the buns. And that must coincide with, you know, a bit of Draghi's tone. So, you know, he's been very dynamic with his size. He's up to sort of 160 lots, out, then back in. I will rewind that a little bit. Or maybe not actually, there's, um, there's a better bit later. But, you know, as you get that kind of quick flurry, he's very aggressive to get in. Um, but really, as of yet, he hasn't had a move that's kind of gone and not pulled back. And the way that he scales out relatively passively means that he's not really capitalised on it. We see he's still hovering around that scratch level on the day. You know, he's kind of going on offside as much as he's going onside, but he's staying in the game. You know, he's not getting pushed out. Fair enough, you're doing a lot of round trips, but you know, it's not really too much of a concern for this trader. You know, up to 200 lots when... You know, he feels the offer's kind of holding. And maybe that coincides with some things that Draghi said. But again, back to 100 lots, 134 lots. You know, he's very quick to kind of scale out.
This sort of stage is very important how he's kind of managed his risk here because as we'll see when that final big move does come, so again, he's up to 130 lots, market kind of goes, he goes about five ticks on side or so, and then again, just now kind of rotating towards the lows, but in a much stronger position than we've seen really. But what I was saying before, he likes to kind of manage his average entry you know, relative to the rotations he sees, that's where he's most aggressive. Always coming back through where he's got his size on. It's just quite frustrating at the moment. You know, you can, you can tell that he's kind of getting his size on at the right time, but he's not getting out aggressively enough, which is kind of warranted when you're looking for that extended move because you don't want to get out over the, you know, next five ticks and then the market go and take all those daily levels that you'd identified on, you know, your technical assessment. So... He's kind of dragging his average price down, getting up to around 200 lots. But really targeting the next break of this low, if it does it with real aggression, you know, those, those targets towards kind of, I think, 80s, 70s to 80s are really in play. So again, another extension and then all the way back. And because he doesn't want to carry 200 lots offside, especially during this kind of higher volatility, you know, he's very quick to kind of size down, as you can see here, down from 200 lots to 150 lots. You know, he's, he'll, he'll take three ticks or so offside with decent size, but after that, really starts to just kind of, just tighten up a little bit, get a little bit more defensive, and understand that he's still waiting for that kind of big move, which we're gonna see now. So I'm gonna start playing this at one times the speed. Oh, sorry, just skip through that. Okay, so he's up to 170 lots. Getting quite confident now. Euro's still pushing higher that these 97 should go. Just wants to manage his, you know, his average price, you know, within a decent kind of five to ten ticks from the low, so you're not always under pressure every time it bounces a little bit. Sorry, this is where I kind of jumped forward last time, but so at this moment he's still five k down on the day, so about 35k or so down, or 40k down in the bonds since the move started. But really just looking for that one kind of extended flush. And you know, I spoke a lot about what Draghi was talking about at this sort of time, um, when this move does come out. And really it pieces, well, it pieces together quite well, or well, very well obviously, with um, with his execution. So pretty much flat on the day. 120 lots short, 130 lots short. Starts to approach the lows, looking quite, you know, offers looking quite firm here. You can see it's Reloading's pushing down, you know, he actually missed a fill at 98 for another kind of 133 lots, I think it is. It's only filled on 27 of them. So he's up to 240 lots now. Still maintaining that sort of size around 200 lots. You know, just wants to make sure that when it does go, he's got the size on. Euro's still stuck to the highs, so everything's looking, you know, relatively good from that.
perspective, there's no real reason to be kind of panicking out. Just lightening up a little bit as he goes offside from 200 lots to around 150 lots. It should be pretty soon that Draghi's kind of tone starts to shift. This kind of five, six level is kind of holding at the moment. Right, just going to fast forward a little bit because it's a bit further forward than I thought it was. Right, again, we can see, you know, multiple times, probably 10 or so more times, he's got up to that 200 lots sort of level, then lightened up, then got back up to that 200 lots level, lightened up again. There's some real persistence here. And it's kind of that strategy that once you start doing it, if you pick that's what to do, that's the way you're going to trade this sort of stuff. And you've got to commit to it because, you know, something I'm quite bad at is, you know, I'm quite aggressive. And then once I've lost some money, I, I start to lighten up and trade smaller size. And it means when this final move comes up to 330 lots now, you know, I'm not really taking full advantage of it as much as he does when this final flow comes, this flurry. He's up to 240 lots sold. Um, the lows in the bubble as well, so 540 lots or so across the two markets. I think these daily levels come in around this sort of area. It's the biggest that he's been. You know, he's immediately offside in the bubble by one or two ticks, but not looking to worry too much. You know, the euro's still pushing higher. In fact, not lightening up in the bubble at all as he's gone offside here. And now this is the final flush, which he was kind of playing for and looking for the whole time. Adds up to 400 lots in the buns, so sort of 650 lots across the two markets. Just take note of his p &L. He's up to sort of 30k up on the day, 27k up on the day now. And now as this starts to go, you know, this is where the real kind of meat of, you know, this ECB afternoon is made. Just this kind of one, two minute section of the presser just sort of shows, you know, you've got to be so astute to where the opportunity is and really your main goal is just to make sure that you have appropriate size on at that moment. And he's done that perfectly in this scenario. You know, to be, you know, fully kind of sized up in two markets, you know, which are positively correlated like this. So I think at this point, as we've taken um, the daily levels, which as I said before, between 80s and sort of 71s, I think maybe the last one, you know, that final little pop through, and then you can see he lightens up very kind of aggressively from there. You know, it's what you like to see at the end of these moves is a kind of final pop and then a bounce, you know, a bigger bounce than you've seen on the way down um, relative, to, you know, relative to the rotations you've seen through that final flurry of the move. And now so quickly he's gone from 650 lots to you know, 30, 40 lots across the two markets in the space of two minutes. Um, and it just sort of demonstrates you know, that, is, that is what he was looking for. It's showing the whole build up, the whole setup. And it's just that kind of one, two minutes is where you really capitalise and you, you have to stay working at it 
until you get paid in this scenario. Now, granted, Draghi could have said nothing, the markets could have not moved, but those lows, I think it came in at 97s or whatever it was, you know, they're very susceptible in this sort of situation where we've seen a failure to the upside. So just wary that I want to get through all of the kind of key areas. Now switching towards the markets come down and bounced and referring to kind of Draghi's tone, this is where he flips and starts talking very dovishly about you know, the potential for cuts or um, putting kind of new APP in place and the market kind of moves up as a result. So I'm just going to play this forward. I may have to fast forward this bit a little bit more. So we're going to play this at four times just because we've still got another move to get through. So as the market pushes higher, you know, he gets long, but he doesn't actually get quite as aggressive as he got on the downside. You know, up to 150 lots in the burns, 240 lots in the bobble. But again, the fact that we're not trading towards an extreme, it's a little bit trickier to kind of find where you want to get your size on um, to be able to weather the kind of the relatively high volatility rotations that you see throughout the presses. So he's up to 180 lots in the buns, 130 lots in the bobble. You know, he's up to 93k um, in the green on the day. So really big swing there, like 120k swing in the past you know, hour or so of trading. And really it just shows, you know, he can be quite dynamic with, he doesn't necessarily have to have a bias on where the market's going. You know, you're reacting to what Draghi's saying and, and how the market's going to react after having such a big sell-off. A lot of people positioned for, you know, potential continuation to the downside. When Draghi flips his tone, you know, there's a chance for that instant reaction. Um, but you can see he's not at this stage necessarily looking to kind of get in and hold big size right now for the remainder of the presser until you kind of get confirmation that nothing new is going to come out. It's getting a little bit more size in, but not really up to the levels that he had before. So he's up about 105k on the day. And really now, I'm not going to show the rest of the presser, but you know, he kind of, you know, gives a little bit back, getting chopped up a little bit in, in the presser, but, you know, fair enough, that's the kind of strategy that you employ where you're trying to get on one of those big extended flush moves. If they don't come, the amount of time that you spend participating in the market, gearing up for that, you know, it's always going to deplete your P&L, you know, to an extent, especially when he's up this much on the day, you know, he's got his eyes set on, you know, best day ever if something big comes out, you know, he's always kind of pushing to kind of really take you know the size that he's trading and the, the size of the days that he's um, generating to the next level as we've seen throughout his progression you know even in the past year or so since I've been doing the streams on him you know we look back where you know 100k up used to be you know a, a huge day for him now it's kind of a bit of a, you know it, it sounds ridiculous to say it but it's a bit of a given that in this sort of scenario you'd expect him to be pushing those sort of numbers. So now I just want to fast forward to the end. And this is kind of my favourite part of this whole, this whole kind of afternoon session. I spoke about it quite a bit in um, the last stream, but didn't actually show any of the price action throughout the ladders. Um, a trade that I was involved in, but didn't really size up, didn't really get aggressive enough. Um, but we can see so far, so he's made the meat, the most of his money, in that kind of final flush down taking these levels. And now as the presser finishes, we're trading in this sort of zone, US is just about to open at 2.30 um, UK time. And you know, after talking to him, it's just something that you know, he's seen so consistently, you know, where throughout an ECB, 
um, there's been kind of an offer or an unwind to the downside. You've seen these moves reverse so frequently as the bonds, the bonds then start to recover and push higher. And it's kind of you know, evident of where we're trading at the moment, political risk, where we are in the rate cycle. You know, it seems to be anytime you're selling, trying to hold for an extended move in the bonds, you know, it generally seems to be safer to be long all the time. And we can just sort of see here, as he got a bit of a clue that the entire kind of down move from ECB starts to be retraced and observe the real kind of, you know, key price action that you want to see, which is very tight rotation, you know, quite high volume, grindy moves, no distinct pullbacks. As soon as he saw that and he got good amount of size in, like I knew as soon as I was watching this move play out, I had such a strong inkling that he would have really done very well on that move just because after watching so much the way that he trades, when he gets a lot of size in and he gets a very preferable average price and the rotations are relatively small, when he's not put under pressure, it just gives him free reign to get more and more aggressive. And it's really where he can just take advantage of this sort of grindy move up here where you one time framed on a five and a one minute um, chart all the way up for about 30 ticks or so. So this also plays into I'm going to start playing it in normal time. This also plays into um, you know, the, the dovish rhetoric that Draghi put in, very distinct, very you know, um, purposeful in the way that he spoke about cuts and um, you know, new APP being put in place. You know, after the market starts to digest that he's not saying anything more, you know, there's also a good chance that that's going to bite and kind of start to push bonds higher. So he's down back down to about 77K up on the day from I think his peak was about 120. But still, you know, this sort of demonstrates you could not be involved whatsoever throughout the whole of um, the headlines and the press conference. You know, you could not have access to any news wires, any squawk feed or anything like that. It doesn't matter um, because there's still opportunities that come into play when there's this many participants kind of in the market. And we see that's where the kind of, the moves and the charts flow so much more, and you can kind of start to use your technical, you know, trades a lot more effectively in those sort of conditions, because you're not gonna have these kind of 10 tick washbacks any time you get your size on. And really, as we see market trade up through these sort of 95s, 96s, that's where we really wanna pay attention to, you know, how he executes and maintains his average price relative to market. So I sped back up to four speed just to get back up there. But you know, he's offside in two markets, 50 lots, 60 lots in bonds in the bonds and bubble. But he's not really worried too much at this point. Um, you know, he understands that can happen. If anything, he's just looking for the bid to kind of hold in these areas so he can deploy some more size, um, which will very easily just kind of reset his position much closer to market. But you can see now, we're just starting to see an indication that press has finished, US market's open, and we're just starting to grind higher, but just really want to pay attention to um, the rotations. We're kind of, you know, we're not pulling back more than one or two ticks, and it's a real distinct price action that we see on these ECB days, and, you know, it's something that you have to take advantage of when you see it. And something I fail to do is when I observe this sort of price action, I start to try to feed my clips in quite small. And that doesn't really, it's not the price action to support that because by the time you're 10 ticks offside, you're worried about you know, buying the high, the rotation, and then you know, messing up what is already a profitable trade. Really the key is to get your size in early in this sort of scenario, which is what we've seen here. He's in with 80 lots but immediately trying to get another 80 lots on as he kind of feels, you know, the bid keeps stepping up. And I want to play this in real time just because it's so key how the bid trades this sort of area. So every time it makes a new price, it might trade down, it will down tick one tick or so, and then the bid sort of steps in. And particularly in this kind of 95s, 96, 97s area, it's such a good execution zone. 
even if he hadn't kind of been participating up to now. So he's getting filled, 94s, he's front of the queue at 94s, and the bid's kind of just holding, and then it goes, bids over two ticks, and then fails to come back. You see the bid just keeps stepping up every time. It just shows that there's buyers in the market, you know, don't really want to wait for this to pull back to kind of 87s, 88s. Everyone kind of understands that it's not necessary for that to happen. Well, I say everyone, I mean, the market participants are showing that, um, but it's kind of rotating two ticks. And he's so good when he gets in this position now. He's kind of, his average price is beyond the sort of rotations that you're seeing from market. So he can afford to keep adding in and keep dragging his average price up after recognising that the rotations are two, three, max four ticks. As long as he's keeping his average price, say four ticks, behind market, now it's just a game of just feeding in clips which is not getting filled on a lot of them. He's left front of the queue at 94s and 98s, which again is just showing that, you know, there's some real kind of aggressive buying going on here, even if it's not kind of flushing. Um, but we haven't seen more than the three tick rotation at this time. And now he's up to 230 lots, you know, he's in such a strong position because he's just not gonna change what he's doing until he sees a rotation or a pullback which you know really exceeds that kind of two three ro tick rotation that we've seen so far pulled back to the front of the queue at, um, where he's positioned at 98s couldn't trade in there 99s went bid and still just kind of passively scaling out on the offer with 10 lots but every time the market extends higher you know he's willing to get a little bit more in and drag his average price to within three or four ticks of market and it's so kind of delicate what he's doing here, even though he's doing it with a lot of size, but it's the perfect execution for this kind of price action. Other than just getting in with massive size and just leaving it and letting it go. But if you like being dynamic, you like clicking, and you, you, know, you want to feel like you're participating and doing something, which you know, for a lot of people, this trader included, you know, it, it, he says that's what allows him to keep to stay in these trades in that, you know, he can keep clicking, he can feel like he's involved, he can feel like he's in control of his size. But you see he's extended five ticks or so from his average price. Still hasn't rotated back more than three or so ticks. And really now, as we've traded up from 88 to 05s, you know, 15 ticks, um, you're starting to look at you know, some of the key reference points. I think the kind of the block of the day's value area comes in you know, throughout this kind of 10s to 20s area. Um, and you're kind of identifying those sort of zones um, as good targets to kind of take out. You know, the higher the day is up towards 60s, so you probably wouldn't see that. But the first pullback after the 12.45 came in at around 23s, 24s. You know, so it's a nice little five minute swing high, really good area for the market to target. And really kind of structurally on the chart as we'll look at at the end of this, you know, it just would be the sort of target that you'd, you know, anyone who, who would look at it would kind of deem right if we're double bottomed and we're starting to grind up back through to the day's value area, you know, it's a decent target to set. Working himself back in you know, a little bit. He had, he's maintained his position above, say, 170 lots for pretty much the entirety of the move since he was getting in in this sort of 91s to 95s area and hasn't been put under any pressure. And really, that's just, that's what I mean by, you know, the perfect alignment of an execution strategy with the price action. If you can put yourself in a pretty comfortable trade where you can carry that much size and you know, not be too worried about adding another 100 lots as he did there into the kind of high of the move after a 20, 30 tick move at 07s. You know, he's, it, it sort of shows you've got the right idea and if it ain't broke, just don't, you know, don't fix it, don't try to mess with it at this stage. It's just about you know, taking advantage of you know, all of these pieces coming together, be it the 
what Draghi said, the technical structure, um, and then the price action that's all kind of coming together to kind of, you know, give you that opportunity to take advantage of. And this is really a lot of the time we see a lot of people, myself included, you know, we've been hit throughout ECB and we kind of switch off, we're a bit, you know, worn out, energy levels are low, a bit annoyed with ourselves. And really, if you're just astute to the price action, now we're watching it back, it looks so obvious what was happening in this zone. And the execution strategy looks so obvious, but if you never got your size on quick enough in this 95s to 97s area, you know, it's, that's what really kind of paved the way for this trade to pay off, which, you know, for a technical trade happening after ECB, and I think he makes north of kind of 40K from it, you know, it's just one move. It's not even like a comment or anything like that. These trades are available for all of us to take. Um, and it's just about kind of piecing everything together and understanding what you're seeing and recalling, right, that's the execution strategy that I want to deploy in this sort of situation. And really, I'm talking to myself for this because I've seen this so many times after ECBs or FOMCs where we start to get these grindy one-time framing moves and, you know, you just have to resort to, I know what execution strategy I need to do. I know that I need to take my risk relatively early in this move. If it is going to continue, you know, I will really get paid and the risk reward is there. So again, this has been going on for sort of 10, 15 minutes or so, but it's just not changed at all. Now, I mean, I don't really want to slow it to fast speed it up because it's just quite nice to watch, but just to kind of get to see the whole move, speed this up again to four times. We see he hasn't gone offside once in this relative to the moves we're seeing where he's building his size before, where you know he's onside five ticks, offside four, onside five ticks, offside four so much simpler and again the rotation has just been so small so narrow two three four ticks just at a kind of low tick um, max and just grinding 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 higher the bid just stepping up every time like decent clips stepping up and then you know reloading a little bit but nothing's really trading down that much you know, you're seeing small amounts, 30 lots, 40 lots, six lots, and then bid over another two ticks again. And you can see even at this point, he's down to say 100 lots, which relative to his, you know, size is, is pretty low. Um, but even perhaps in this situation, you'd be thinking, right, we've just traded up from say 81s to, you know, 15s now, we should be due a pullback, but it just doesn't come. And as he sees that happening, he's happy again to hit 80 lots into the higher the move, higher the 30 tick move, um, relatively confident that you know, he's still keeping his average price within sort of four or five ticks of market. And if you can just simplify this to that being the game, that's the game I want to play, I want to get some size in, I want to scale out passively as the market rotates higher, but I'm willing to add up so long as I keep you know, my, my, my average entry within sort of three, four ticks from Sorry, right, I just want to pause it here. Three, four ticks from market. Um, and I want to slow it down here, just the end of move. I just want to see, you know, as I've said many a time before, quite often get at a pop. I think the swing high was 23s, 24s on the five minute chart. And you can see he's looking to get out quite aggressively through there. But quite often these moves finish with a little bit of a pop just to indicate that it's, it's over. know we've kind of hit a sort of target area you're just starting to see the price action slow down you're starting to see the bid start to reload a little bit more just showing that there are sellers kind of hitting into the bid um, a little bit more than there were on the way up and then a thousand lot sort of stepping in at 21s I think 22s as well so you know we saw that thousand lot flick up in a lot of circumstances, you know, the, the book can kind of be a little bit misleading with what it's doing. However, in this situation, you know, you'd think, right, we've done a kind of 30 tick straight line move. Um, you know, it's been very grindy. Anyone who's in is unlikely to be, or anyone who's in with a big, big size is unlikely to be kind of 
getting out of everything on the way up. You know, it's quite a logical place for the market to kind of turn a little bit or pull back or whatever. So maybe just something just to keep your eye out in these sort of scenarios, maybe just to trust the order book a little bit more when you see these sort of big orders at the end of these real sustained moves, just something I've observed now, which I'm gonna kind of pay attention to for any subsequent you know, moves that we watch. So I'll leave you with that um, as far as the, um, the ladder's concerned. So we can see here, you know, just such a straight line move, traded up to I think 28s before it only had a six tick or so pullback and then actually traded up through the kind of towards the opening price of the 12.45, which I think came in at 38. Um, and really you can just see all the different areas that you could participate in throughout that afternoon. You know, that was the one that probably offered, this move was the one that probably offered the kind of the most potential um, relative to, you know, the amount of risk that you have to take. You know, we, we can't all weather kind of five, six tick swings with big size on, give it, you know, as a junior trader, you've got much kind of tighter risk in play, certainly for myself, you don't want to get, let things get out of control. And really for me, it's trying to find throughout the course of an afternoon, you know, where is the point where I could have got my size on and actually, you know, stayed in for that whole um, proportion of the move without really putting my kind of daily risk under pressure. Wouldn't have really been able to do it in that area. Would have struggled to do it here until it finally went, unless I got in really quite aggressively through these daily lows. You know, on the Draghi dovish move, there was kind of, you know, again, some kind of big washbacks, five to 10 ticks, so you're gonna to struggle to do it there. But really, this was the move for me that made most sense um, given certainly my risk appetite and the way that I trade. So just some key takeaways, just want to kind of um, leave you with this. So if you can manage your risk at that 12.45, it's so important um, that you kind of, especially when you're relatively new to um, trading these central bank events, which I certainly, you know, fell into this trap. You know, it's built up so much that you've got to get mega aggressive and take advantage of, you know, the policy shift or whatever it is from the headlines that are dropped, that you kind of psych yourself up so much that you just want to go crazy at the 12.45. But it's not necessarily where the best opportunity is. You know, we see these big traders, our elite trader, he always wants to be involved just because he knows that if it does go, you know, there's opportunity for him to get a lot of size away. Um, but if he had the same risk that I had, you know, maybe he wouldn't choose to do that. So you kind of always got to look at where the opportunities lie, you know, relative to your own kind of risk tolerance. Um, and, you know, throughout the press, what he did quite well was just kind of staying short, managing his size, so long as the tone supported, you know, the, the kind of the direction that he was trading in. And as I've said a hundred times already today, the best opportunity can come after the presser. Um, and then finally, if you do recognize that grindy price action, that one time framing, the really narrow rotations, you know, just the game is to get your size in early and then just ma maintain your average price outside of that rotation so long as the move carries on going. And really aside from that, just really for me, just simplify it and you know, just trust the price action that you're seeing because it's so distinct and there's no excuse really for when you do observe that, especially in this kind of scenario where we've seen it happening before, um, not to really get quite aggressive with a view to really getting up, um, in my opinion, to your full size. So I will leave you with that and I'll be back for another stream next week. Cheers.